We're going to do a chromatography setup of grape Kool-Aid. And the grape Kool-Aid is just distilled water with the Kool-Aid package added. But there's no sugar added, so it's just the pigments and a little bit of flavoring. We're going to take a little about 10 milliliters of grape Kool-Aid and we're going to attach our set pack cartridge. We're going to put the long end attached to the syringe. And we're just going to slowly push that through here and collect that in a waste. We want to go slow, so what I'll do is I'll actually speed up the camera here in a second to kind of skip over this. Okay, so now we have our grape Kool-Aid. The grape mix is loaded onto the set pack cartridge here. So what we're now going to do is we're going to do our separation. You can see it happening just a little bit right now. So to help that along, we're going to add 5% isopropanol, or propanol, which is 95% water. And we're going to do the same kind of process here, and so you can watch carefully as we do that we add this. You're going to start to see some separation happening. Again, I'll speed that up. Right now we're starting to get the red color coming out of the end. So right now we can start collecting this into a cuvette. We want to collect this part early so that we get the full red and we don't get any of the other parts of the Kool-Aid. And then once we get enough of that, we'll stop collecting and we'll go ahead and kind of waste some of the rest. We won't need it at that point, so that's plenty. So now we're going to go ahead and just kind of pummel through the red here. We'll probably use a little more isopropanol and we'll go ahead and speed the video up. Alright, now we're just starting to get clear here. So we're going to go ahead and slow down with the 5%. And we're going to go ahead and put the rest of that in the back in there. And now we're going to switch over to 25% isopropanol. And this time we want to, as soon as we start to see blue, we want to do the opposite. We kind of want to wait a little more towards the end to make sure all the red has passed through. And that 25% should push it through pretty quickly so that red is probably mostly through now. And now we can go ahead and switch over and start collecting. There's our grape Kool-Aid separated, so I'm going to keep pushing that out to clear everything out the line. And then we're going to go ahead and plug that into a Spectrovis spectrophotometer and see what they look like. Now we can go ahead and evaluate our separation. So we're going to plug in our red solution here. And we can see the absorbance peak in that green and blue, and we don't see any other peak. So it looks like that's a very clean separation. Plug in the blue. And it looks like we've got again a single peak right in the orange red, right where we expect it to be. So the blue solution is absorbing orange light. And then we have the original Kool Aid. And there we see both peaks, both the green absorption and the orange absorption together. When we're doing the chromatography, it can really help to look at a particle level that's going on. So grape Kool-Aid is composed of two different dyes, the blue and the red. But when mixed, that appears to our eye as purple. So we would perceive this to be purple when they're mixed. When we start to flood this apparatus with water, even though originally the grape Kool-Aid is dissolved in that water, once it gets into the column, these red and blue particles stick to the white ones. And then the rest of the water just kind of continues through and then leaves at the bottom. A little bit of spreading as we go. And so really these just kind of stick on the column. But once we start to put in a little bit of the propen to all, then we start to see that the red particles start to move down with them. So at that point we start to see this because what's happening is the yellow particles are pulling some of those red ones where there's an interaction between those causing the red to move. Now the blue moves a little bit more than that, but really it's not until we've moved most of the red out and then we kind of ramp up the concentration and we flood this thing with isopropanol, then we start to see the blue moving through as well. And so what we kind of see happening is the red particles have moved out first, and we separate out that where those are 
dissolved in some water and isopropanol. And then secondly, after that, that's when the blue particles start to come out, where there's a little bit of mixing in between where there's some of each. And so we use the chromatography to separate this based on how the red, blue, yellow, and white particles interact with each other. And when the particles are moving with the yellow ones, they're interacting more strongly with the yellow particles. When they're not moving, they're interacting more strongly with the white particles.